The world is changing. Thanks to advanced technologies, new innovations are being delivered faster than ever before. Self-driving cars, flying robots, gene editing, and blockchain technologies. But there's one technology that will not only dwarf the rest, but help define them. I'm talking about artificial intelligence, which is already changing human productivity in a fundamental way, just like the smartphone did, and the internet before it, and computers before that. We need to talk about this idea today because we can invest in this idea today, and AI could unlock over $80 trillion in economic value by 2030. That's trillion with a T. So in this episode, I'll highlight some of the latest investing research on artificial intelligence and show you five great stocks of companies that are winning in this market right now, one of which hasn't even gone public yet. Your time is valuable, so let's get right into it, starting with the supercut of ARK Invest's latest research on artificial intelligence as presented in their 2022 Big Ideas Summit. Within the AI space, we expect that artificial intelligence and the associated technologies will yield more than $100 trillion in market capitalization by 2030. There's mobile connected devices here that includes expectations for augmented reality headsets and the constellation of devices that you wear on your person. Cloud computing is kind of the infrastructure as a service layer that gives us access to a supercomputer in our pockets from any connected device. As a response to the demand for AI, we think there's going to be a meaningful increase in compute hardware spend to support it, exceeding a trillion dollars. Internet of Things is, is fixed connected devices. So the smart speakers, the smart TVs, and you can think of this as this is the media retail space that lives inside your home that allows you to frictionlessly buy things through e-commerce platforms and frictionlessly access media and potentially you know, public blockchain Web3 assets. Uh, and of course, AI itself, and, and this drives a lot of the value accrual expectations here. The value accrual is predicated on the fact that the advances in AI suggest that it's not going to be considered uh, artificial intelligence, but instead augmented intelligence, where every knowledge worker will become more productive. Every software engineer will become more productive. And the um, productivity value that we anticipate spilling off AI will actually meaningfully exceed the, the revenue that AI software companies will capture. The less expensive a technology or innovation is, the more people have access to it. And the problem right now is, is neural networks are quite expensive to train. And so if we look at something like GPT-3, in 2020, it costs about $4.6 million to train. But with cost declines, it's becoming much less expensive. And so as cost declines, we're seeing more access and creating more availability for organizations like universities and nonprofits. At the other end of the spectrum, well-funded organizations like OpenAI are able to continue pushing the boundaries of what's possible in terms of model size and performance. So just to put this into, into context, GPT-3 cost about $4.6 million to train in 2020. If we went back to 2015, we estimate it would have cost about $875 million to train a model of that size. So we saw a cost decline at about 65% a year from $875 million in 2015 to $4.6 million in 2020. Based on our analysis, we think that costs will continue to decline at about 60% a year. So we could see a cost decline all the way down to $500 by 2030. That's a decline from $875 million to just over $500 in 15 years, which is pretty incredible. And to break this down a little bit further, typically when we model cost declines at ARC, uh, we do so with Wright's Law. So we conducted two different studies to model cost declines in AI. The first is the cost of compute. So this is the cost of hardware and, and the computers that are actually used to train neural networks. Those costs will decline at about 39% a year through 2030. The second study we did looked at the amount of compute required by neural networks. We think that's going to decline at about 37% a year through 2030. And so those combine to create cost declines of about 60% a year, which is how we get that GPT-3 estimate of $4.6 million in 2020, all the way down to $500 in 2030. So shifting to the market opportunity for AI, we think one of the most useful applications of AI will be making human knowledge workers more productive. AI will increase the output of knowledge workers by about 140%. So that more than doubles the output of a knowledge worker. OpenAI has a tool called Codex, which could be thought of as Google Translate for software engineers. A developer can put in an English language command, like make a red ball bounce on the screen, and Codex will actually generate functional software code that they can use in production. 
So if we zoom out and look at the macro here, we think that by 2030, AI can increase the output of human knowledge workers by about $56 trillion a year. To put this in perspective, by 2030, we think knowledge workers will have an output of about 41 trillion, just alone, just humans. But if we combine humans with AI, we think that output will hit $97 trillion. So that's a huge step up in human output. We think that companies and organizations are going to be willing to pay about 25 cents for every incremental dollar in output, which would suggest the market for AI software will be about $14 trillion in 2030. And so we would see a step up from a trillion dollars a year today to $14 trillion in 2030, which would represent a 42% compound annual growth rate. So the demand for software will likely drive a demand for hardware. The more models that we have and the larger these models become, the more compute we need to actually train these models. And so we think that the market for compute for AI will increase from about 17 billion today to about $1.7 trillion in 2030. And to put this in the perspective of overall IT spend, IT spend historically has hovered between four and 5% of GDP. And so in 2022, companies spend just under $5 trillion a year on IT. And consensus forecasts would suggest that by 2030, that number will be just over $5 trillion. But we think the demand for AI could actually increase that number by about $15 trillion, suggesting that spend in IT could grow from just under $5 trillion today to just over $20 trillion by 2030. If we're right, the adoption of AI could lead to one of the greatest periods of wealth creation in human history. AI companies today are worth about $2.5 trillion. And our analysis suggests that by 2030, those companies could be worth, or companies in general, could be worth $87 trillion. And this is a combination of companies building both AI applications, the underlying models and software that power those applications, as well as the hardware and compute that's used to train those models. AI tends to be a source of a lot of dystopian angst. What's your case for, you know, utopian or 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 positive outcomes uh, that avoid the kind of worst anxieties people have about the proliferation of AI technology? Half of the solution is understanding the problem. And I think the reason we're understanding the problem uh, maybe a little faster than would otherwise have been the case. And and understanding it uh, more broadly is because China wants to win at this game. And they are moving up the league tables in terms of semiconductor uh, chip manufacturing, uh, focusing on AI. In terms of uh, solving the world's problems, we see AI converging with each of the platforms, including blockchain technology. We see it critical to autonomous taxi systems and drones, which are going to lower the cost of transportation and make it much more convenient than it is right now and much safer, much safer. We see it in the genomics space, the convergence of DNA sequencing and artificial intelligence and gene editing and other gene therapies, the convergence of those actually curing disease. We are now have functional cures for sickle cell disease, beta thalassemia, and a rare disease called ATTR. We are curing disease. Could not happen without artificial intelligence. By 2030, artificial intelligence will touch nearly every part of our daily lives, from search engines and streaming services to cryptocurrencies and quantum computing, which is why it sits at the heart of ARK Invest's big ideas every single year. Let's talk about software first. Software spending is expected to grow at a 42% compound annual growth rate for the next nine years, from roughly $1 trillion today to about $14 trillion by 2030. The big idea on the software side is a huge productivity boost to knowledge workers like software developers, bookkeepers, and office administrators. One company that's focused on exactly this is UiPath, ticker symbol P-A-T-H. UiPath focuses on something called RPA, or Robotics Process Automation. UiPath defines RPA as a software technology that makes it easy to build, deploy, and manage software robots that emulate human actions interacting with digital systems and software. UiPath's bots are often used to manage simple but monotonous workflows, for example, parsing emails to retrieve data that need to be entered in a bunch of other forms or applications. Or how about building a chatbot that simulates a conversation with a human being by answering frequently asked questions and directing customers to useful resources, eliminating the need for a human employee to be doing that. UiPath has developed an entire suite of tools for building and managing these bots, 
not just the bots themselves. Their platform incorporates different capabilities like computer vision and natural language processing, which lets people create more advanced automations with little to no code. The goal here isn't only to put an end to repetitive tasks, but to fully emulate human workers, at least in some roles. UiPath is ARK Invest's fifth biggest position overall, with over $900 million in it across all six of their actively managed funds. The fact that UiPath sits in all six of ARK Invest's funds matters because it shows just how broadly impactful impactful this idea of automating and emulating knowledge workers can be in every single innovation area from genomics to robotics, from fintech to space exploration. The only other stock inside all six ARK Invest funds is Palantir, ticker symbol PLTR, and I believe it's for the same reasons. Palantir builds advanced data analytics platforms for the government and other large institutions, many of which tend to have a hard time with big data because they were built well before the world went digital. To help them, Palantir Software automates several key big data challenges like transporting, transforming, storing, securing, analyzing, visualizing, and predicting trends in that data. And that's just for starters. Palantir focuses on rapidly digitizing their clients' businesses to make data a part of their foundation, allowing them to interact with their digital twin. Then Palantir helps people make insights based on this new foundation through all the other cool decision support tools their platforms offer. Search, analytics, modeling and simulation, artificial intelligence, visualization, reporting, and so on. Palantir has been aggressively moving down market to medium-sized commercial businesses through their SPAC investments as well as their Foundry for Builders program. By partnering with companies across a wide variety of verticals, Palantir has come out with automation and analytics solutions for anti-money laundering, artificial intelligence and machine learning, automotive and mobility, supply chain management, cryptocurrencies, financial services, the list goes on and on. The things all of these very different industries have in common is that they're using lots and lots of data from lots of sources to make high-level decisions. That's the need that Palantir's platforms address. Palantir is ARK Invest's 18th biggest position overall, with just under $400 million held across all six of their actively managed funds. If you're interested in seeing my deep dives on Palantir, I've put them all in one convenient playlist for you, which you can find in the top right-hand corner of your screen right now, and in the description below as well. When it comes to artificial intelligence, software is only half the battle, and demand for software will drive demand for hardware. ARK Invest expects hardware spend driven by AI to go from roughly $17 billion today to $1.7 trillion by 2030, implying a whopping 67% compound annual growth rate over the next nine years. In my opinion, if you want to find a great company that does amazing work on both the software and hardware side of artificial intelligence for knowledge workers, you can't go wrong with Microsoft. For software and services, Microsoft has things like their Windows operating system, Skype, GitHub, LinkedIn, and of course, their huge suite of Office tools, including Excel and Exchange and Project and Access. I'm pretty sure half of everyone's job is done using Microsoft spreadsheets and email, and the other half is done by copying code from GitHub. That's a joke. Probably. Microsoft also has a suite of AI tools and intelligence applications aimed specifically at knowledge workers, process and workflow streamlining, data visualization packages, scheduling tools and integrations, on and on and on. On the computing infrastructure side, Microsoft Azure is one of the biggest cloud computing services available with data centers all over the world. I get it, you already know a ton about Microsoft. Heck, it's the second biggest company in the world by market cap. One thing you may not know about Microsoft is it's just one of five organizations authorized for mission-critical national security systems at impact level 5 by the U.S. Department of Defense. The other four organizations that can touch systems at this level are Oracle, Project Hosts, DISA, which is the Defense Information Systems Agency, and Palantir. That means Microsoft's Azure infrastructure can really handle any kind of situation and network configuration. And that's not getting into any of Microsoft's software or hardware focused on gaming with PCs or the Xbox. Microsoft is currently working to acquire Activision Blizzard for a whopping $69 billion, which would be the biggest technology transaction ever in the US. If that acquisition goes through, Microsoft would own some of the biggest gaming IPs on the planet, including World of Warcraft, Call of Duty, and my favorite, Candy Crush. Speaking of acquisitions, just a few days ago, Nvidia's bid to acquire ARM from SoftBank for $40 billion collapsed after regulators around the world raised concerns. 
ARM is a British semiconductor company that designs chips used by Apple and other huge mobile device makers. In their Big Ideas 2021 report, ARK Invest predicted that by 2030, as much as 71% of data center processors could be using ARM-based architectures by 2030, seriously disrupting Intel's x86 architecture, which is the standard today. ARM could also power the majority of developer PCs by 2030 as well. For example, Apple has been designing their own ARM-based M1 chips since late 2020. This gives all of their product lines a common computing architecture. At the same time, Microsoft is working to support Windows on ARM processors, not just x86. Now that the NVIDIA ARM acquisition isn't going through, SoftBank plans to IPO ARM by the end of the first quarter of 2023. So, about a year from now. So go ahead and add ARM to your pre-IPO watch list and keep an eye out for which processors are making it in to new server solutions. Now let's talk about NVIDIA. NVIDIA's GPUs have revolutionized high-performance computing as well as the mobile computing markets. Their impact extends way beyond high-end graphics for video games. NVIDIA has long been developing solutions for machine learning, data analytics, and conversational AI, which is powering revolutionary breakthroughs in areas like speech recognition software and natural language processing. They also build their SuperPods, which are their commercially available supercomputers designed specifically for artificial intelligence tasks, as well as their DGX workstations, which are their server solutions for data centers. In my opinion, these machines or machines like them will also run a serious portion of the metaverse or whatever the next generation of the internet will be. On the software side, NVIDIA's Omniverse initiative is a scalable, real-time development platform for collaborative 3D design and simulation. At the foundation of the Omniverse is Pixar's Open Source USD, which stands for Universal Scene Description. This layer allows large groups of people to work simultaneously across multiple software applications on a shared 3D scene, whether it's an automotive factory floor or the set of a movie. NVIDIA's Omniverse is an ecosystem of development tools and assets that grows whenever a partner adds functionality to it via a third-party plugin or connector. For example, Apple, Pixar, and NVIDIA have collaborated to bring advanced physics capabilities to USD. NVIDIA and Adobe are collaborating on a Substance 3D plugin that will unlock new material editing abilities for the Omniverse and Substance 3D users. The list goes on and on, but the point is that this Omniverse ecosystem is already connecting leaders from every industry to be more than the sum of its parts, which means it'll gain all sorts of customers and use cases in the future. Talk about enhancing productivity of knowledge workers. So, there you have it. Hopefully this episode helped you understand some of the latest market research around artificial intelligence, specifically the huge $100 trillion opportunity for enhancing human productivity over the next decade, as well as a few great software and hardware companies that are working on the bleeding edge. If you're just looking for quicker insights every day, I'm always posting new content on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Yes, even TikTok. So go ahead and follow ticker symbol U wherever is most convenient for you. High tech growth stocks like these have been incredibly volatile lately. If you want to know more about this area of the stock market, check out this video right here. If you want to learn more about ARK Invest's big ideas and their market research, this video will give you a lot of bang for your buck. Either way, stay long, stay strong, and thanks for watching. Until next time, this is ticker symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.